Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Charles here, and welcome to a great new show. Now, listen, I have a special guest for you, but she said she's kind of nervous. I'm like, why are you so nervous? We're going to have a great time. So I need all my listeners and viewers on the show to make sure she has a great time on the show. Please welcome my special guest, Shelly. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Shelly, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry. My viewers are so gentle. They're going to have fun with you today because you got a lot of stuff going on. You got a lot of information and business that can help everybody. That's one thing I like about it. I was checking out your website and there's a lot of resources that, that you can help people that need the help. So let's dive yeah. right into it. Before we get started, who is Shelly? Born and raised. Where are you from, Shelly? I'm originally uh, from Jamaica, so I'm a Jamaican immigrant. I'm in Toronto now, so Canadian. Um, mother, wife, uh, friend, um, person that really loves the um, empowerment of women um, in our community, um, women of all backgrounds, um, age groups. I believe in uh, women in tech. Um, I just whatever it is that I can do or be of service um, in my communities is uh, important to me. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, who Shelly is. All right. So let's narrow it down, though. Which part of Jamaica are you from? <laughs> Kingston. I'm Kingstonian. So no. born and bred in Kingston. Not, not, right. not rural. <laughs> Half of my audience just made some noise and they just, they just went. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. So then. Growing up in Jamaica, what were your thoughts and, and for business? Like, what did you want to do? What did you want to become? Well, growing up in Jamaica, I wanted to get out <laughs> of, of um, you know, where I was born. I was not fortunate to be born, um, you know, with a lot of stuff. I was born, you know, poor, as many Jamaicans are. I always had, I was always outstanding academically. I mean, I went to high school at nine years old. So I was always outstanding, but I always felt as if um, I had potential, but the means to um, become my best self would some might elude me. So um, my, growing up, I just wanted to access opportunity. Um, that was that was it. I wanted to access opportunity that would assist me in becoming the best version of myself. OK, so then anything that you saw that you said, OK, I can be that like what was the first two jobs that you started to grow up and go, oh, that's me. I know that's me. I wanted to become the, the first female prime minister of Jamaica, believe it or not. That was my first big goal. I, I was involved in politics at a young age. I was involved in the youth organization. So that was my first goal. And as I got more into politics, I realized it was not for me. Um, then I, you know, I kind of pivoted towards business and it's, you know, it's where I stayed. I think I lost here. I think I lost. Um... All right, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes sorry. There you go. So that's okay. So, what age did you get that entrepreneurial bug? What age did you say, you know something? I can't work for people. <laughs> I need to work I, for myself. I, I've, since uh, about 19 years old, I've started working for myself. So okay. I started really young. Apart from summer jobs, I really, my first career was entrepreneurship. And then what was the first job that you said, you know something, I'm going on my own. What, what was it? My first opportunity came, I uh, worked um, temporarily at a computer shop. I was like really outstanding. The store was closing and the overseas investor gave me the opportunity to keep the store open if I would work for free and okay. prove uh, my maturity and ability to manage the company. And that was my very big break. And I worked like crazy. I walked to work. I brought my lunch from, you know, just <laughs> I, I was not going to let the opportunity, you know, go. So I did um, everything that I could to ensure that, um, you know, I was successful. There you go. There you go. So what's so you you said you're a, a mother, a wife. So what's the one thing about the business that you're trying to teach your children right now? To um, have a positive mindset. One of the things that I've learned as an entrepreneur is that everything um, that you need to keep you is within your mind. I mean, there's always going to be challenges and obstacles, but unless you are in full control of your mind and also um, your 
how I structure my day. I'm a big, big um, believer in routine. So I try to um, focus on my mind and keep my routines. And if I have successful routines throughout the day, then I will eventually have a successful day, which is, leads to a successful week and so forth and so on. All so right. that's what I try to teach them. So give me an example of your routine. What is Shelly in the morning? So my morning routine is to get up at five. I have my oh, spiritual okay. one hour. You just lost yes. me. Yes. <laughs> spiritual <laughs> one hour. Um, I, I, I try to put in exercise. This is if I, I do a perfect morning routine. Okay. My, um, I do my exercise, uh, breakfast, and I try to get my daughter ready, um, my eight-year-old to school and so forth. And then I start my morning. I have to get up really early because that's the only time I'll get to exercise and have any mental um, time where you know, I'm free to not be feeling as if I'm in a rush or I'm not doing something. So I that's get- what the early mornings are, are about. But yeah. <laughs> So that's your that's your me time. That's your time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if I don't wake up, I lose it. Because <laughs> soon as you said five o'clock, it was like that's over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you set your day. You start it off. You get going. Then what is the main thing that you focus on for yourself to get stronger in business? Because what I've been interviewing people, I find out that they all have their routines. They do their affirmation. They do their their general stuff, and it just starts off their day like they're already focused and then some people get out of bed and like oh okay i'll start later oh i'll do this they're not really focused on getting it going so what's the main thing that you know why you started to do this i'm a super uh, scheduler i have my uh one year um calendar schedules and what i want to accomplish each month then it's broken down into weeks then it's broken down into days so when i wake up i have my to-do list already I believe that if you uh, roll out of bed and then you try to figure it out, you're just going to always be behind or things that's going to left undone. What priority won't, you know, you won't know what's priority and so forth. So I try to be really scheduled and always on my desk, I'll have a million books, my to-do list, my this, my that. It's it's just, I'm very scheduled. If not, I'll, I'll be, I'll procrastinate like everybody else. Right. I will be all over the place like everybody else. So without that, so there's no superpower. It's just to be super organized and scheduled and and that's and that was that's what makes me successful okay so let's talk about your success let's talk about your business tell everybody what your main core business is so my main core business is uh, workforce transformation i work with both entrepreneurs and uh, mostly senior professionals who either want to clarify um, what they want to do as a career whether it's a, it's a new uh, leaf you're turning over, whether you're starting as an entrepreneur for the first time, I guide them in getting into the next stage of their lives, figuring out what their strengths are, how can they um, be fulfilled, more fulfilled in their career. Um, we suffer from an industry, workforce industry of 85% of people that are disengaged in what they do, and we spend most of our lives at work still. So you can see why the world is what it is. So then let me ask you a question. Is it ever too late to change? Is it ever too late? You Once you're in your job, like some people have been in job for 15 years and they're like, ah, oh, I'm stuck. I don't, I can't, I don't think I can go anywhere. Is it, is it ever too late to change? I don't think so. I think it's never, I think you, you are actually doing yourself a disservice. Imagine waking up and hating what you do for the rest <laughs> of your, you know, your working life. Like, Yes. Who wants to live and die like that? I mean, even if you have 10 years of doing something, you know, that you love, even if you have a year before you die, you know, of living that <laughs> incredible life, why wouldn't you want to do that? I think it's sad when we um, let the world and sometimes even our own circumstances dictate to us that it's too late. However, I do believe you need a plan. We have families, we have expenses. You can't just wake up one day and just drop everything. You need a plan to transition. You need a plan to assist in getting where you are now into the life of what you want, you know, where you want to be and what you want to do. So that's what I think they need. Just it's a plan. Funny. It's funny that you, uh, the reason I asked you that question, it's funny that you said that because I think it was yesterday or my show, uh, my son asked me and I was coming into the studio. He's like, dad, do you, do you like what you do? And I'm like, why are you asking me that? He's like, well, you're always smiling and happy to go interview people and do your job. And I'm like, yeah, if you don't love your job, son, every day you're walking into something you hate, your life is not going to be funny anymore. Uh, 
It's a burden, right? It's like you have a huge burden on your shoulder. It might, you know, can you imagine if we lived somewhere where everyone that you meet is excited to be doing what they're doing? You know, from your taxi driver to um, your uh, the person in your re- your restaurant. It's just everywhere. Everybody's like so excited, so happy. This is your dream job. Like the world would be like a total different place, right? <laughs> well, that is that is the ultimate dream. That is the ultimate dream. Yeah. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to dive into your website and show everybody how do you accomplish this? How do you help them get to that next level? If you're in a position, you're like, oh, I need to get out. Shelly is the person for you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Immigrant Women in Business, IWB, is a nonprofit organization bringing together women from over 50 different countries around the globe. These women have now made Canada their home and share a common goal of providing value to their new sisters. Our motto of We Are Stronger Together resonates with all members and with a diverse membership of business leaders, entrepreneurs and community builders our goal is to make Canada better and provide guidance and leadership to those that follow. CMJ Entertainment is a one-stop shop. CMJ Entertainment helps people do any type of events and it's a marketing tool as well. So we'll cover everything from start to finish. If it's a wedding, we'll make sure your wedding is over the top. And if it's an event, we make sure that everybody gets information at the end of the day. Give us a call at 416-414-8964 or online at cmjent.com. Yes, we are back live, and my special guest, Shelly, and she's going to show us how to make our life better, how to mm. smile. I think, I think that's what the main thing is. We, you know, when you wake up and you go to work, you need to smile. A lot of people ain't smiling yeah. anymore. Uh, right. No, they're not. No, they're not. And it's sad. All right. So here we go. Let's get to your website. Here's your website. And tell us a little bit more about uh, how do we fit? Do we call you? Do we need to set an appointment? How does it work? So are you, uh, we normally set up an appointment. We do a um, free consultation to figure out um, whether you're, it's career-wise or if it's uh, entrepreneurship, um, figure out what you want to do. A lot of times persons have the, the, the nudge and they have an idea, but they are not 100% sure. So we want to ensure that you're at the place where you need to be um, to start and then to um, kind of bring out a plan in the beginning of our consultation. And then once we kind of have that and you, the person is feeling confident, then we move forward. And we also have um, programs and courses that persons can take on their own, which is um, standalone. Okay, so let's go over to some of the resources here. There's a lot of resources, so break some of them down. Uh, five secrets to growing a six-figure business. Um, we break that down into five different areas that you need to um, do or you need to go through as an entrepreneur to ensure that within the first three years of your business, you um, accomplish your objective. Um, and so we, we, we give you so many resources from uh, charts to um, spreadsheets to um, workbooks, just a whole bunch of stuff um, uh, within that. Um, in the and then you're over the programs now. Then we have courses right now. We have three courses that are still open. Um, the Entrepreneur's Compass, which again guides person from the idea stage all the way to growth um, in their business, and the Career Design Compass, which takes you from where you are right now um, into a four to six year journey into accomplishing that new career um, that you want to embark on. All right, so let's let's go back to here for a second. Because a lot of people that start in their career, right, they, I, I, I feel give up too quickly. You know what I mean? They start and then they get upset, like things are not happening for them and they give up too quickly. What do you say about, you know, your entrepreneur diving in? What is what's the mindset you have to go in about? Things are not going to happen right away. That's the main thing. They're not going to happen right away. Yeah, so um, like uh, both for entrepreneurship and career, um, Everything takes effort. It takes a plan. It, you know, you have to have a strategy, and within your strategy, you have timelines, not ridiculous um, fantasy timelines, but real timelines, as proven, you know, as um, you know, done, accomplished by others, you know, before you. So that's something that I would tell persons that are going into entrepreneurship. 
Um, the second thing is I don't think entrepreneurship is for everyone. A lot of persons think that entrepreneurship is the go-to thing. I believe that a lot of persons it, it will not suit um, your who you are as a person. I think persons will be, a lot of persons will do better in a career that is fulfilling. There's a lot of headaches that come with entrepreneurship. <laughs> a lot of headaches. It's, it's not all sunshine it? and rainbows in entrepreneurship. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It, can you can you rewind the tape on that one one more time and just repeat that for everybody, please? It's not for everyone. It's hard. Entrepreneurship is hard, and sometimes it's unnecessary. According to what it is that you want to accomplish in life, it does not mean that everyone has to start a business, right, right. to accomplish that. You can be a senior executive. You can ha be a consultant. There's so many different things that you can do to accomplish success in your, your field you know, of expertise. So I truly recommend that you um, first look at the career. Maybe you're not just dissatisfied with um, being an employee, you're dissatisfied with what it is that you're doing. You're dissatisfied with how, how you're doing it or the organization that you're in. So I kind of work with people first because, as I said, it's entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Okay, so I stopped at this page right here. It says, okay, if entrepreneurship is not for everyone, but then you have in your title, discover your dream job. So you can have your dream job and not be an entrepreneur, correct? Correct, correct. So there you go. So, you know, you find what you're good at, find your happy place. All right. So I see here you do blogging as well. Tell us about the blog. Uh, the blogging is new. Honestly, I'm so busy. I really would like to be more consistent with blogging, but it's here and there. It's something that I plan on work on in my 2021 to 2022. More blogs, more podcasts, getting myself out there instead of just being buried in other persons or uh, other people's lives and their business, get out and put myself out there. So I hope to write more and uh, speak more and just express, um, let others know about my experience and you know just be of service in any way or you know anywhere form that I can from from what I know from my knowledge. All right, and like she said, there is a podcast as well, so you can listen, get him uh, helpful tips and tricks to move forward. All right, so this is what we're gonna do at this time right here. We are going to play a quick game, and it's now time for... Oh. Now time for Pick 3! All right, so it's now time for Pick 3. It's a fun, easy game. It's real simple. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. I see the sweat coming. I'm already nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is an easy game. All you have to do is pick three numbers between 1 and 10. Okay, 3... Seven, nine. All right. So now those are the questions I'm going to ask you from my pile of questions over to the left. All right. Ready? Okay. Question number three that you picked was, what advice would you give someone trying to pursue a career similar to yours? I would say um, you need to um, be versed in many areas of business. Um, running a, being an entrepreneur that works from startup to growing a business you would need to wear many hats. So you need administrative experience, you need uh, marketing, you need uh, business growth and development, a little bit of HR, just a little bit of everything. And uh, sometimes that's something that you can learn in school. And sometimes it's just going to, um, you're gonna accomplish it as you, you, you grow. Okay. Number seven, if you were in my shoes, what question would you have asked yourself that I never asked you? Um, why, why did I decide to, um, go down this path? I mean, I've been in many industries uh, before. Why am I now at this stage of my life into workforce, um, uh, development and, you know, improvement, I guess. And the answer is? The answer, <laughs> the answer would be because I, I ran so many businesses. At one point, I remember I had 400 employees when I was in e-commerce in okay. different call centers and stuff. And I just figured out there's so many people that are just living from hand, like from hand to mouth and they're just operating, but they are not um, doing the best job in that role because they're not operating in their strength. And I found that people not operating in their strength within an organization really negatively impacted the organization. And they don't mean to do it. They just hate what they're doing. And they're, you know, so they're showing up, they uh -huh. hate it. So they cannot, you know, 
be their best selves. They cannot accomplish um, all the potential that's inside of them. And so you as a, a business is suffering. And I just, I, I kept seeing that on and on. And as I got older and more established and more successful, I wanted to follow something that I was passionate about. Okay. And here I am. All right. So last question. Uh, top three people that have influenced you and changed your life. Um, the top uh, three persons are pretty much dead. Um, I think there's a Napoleon Hill. Totally uh, transformed my life when I started um, reading his books. I loved uh, Henry Ford. Um, and I, I love Nelson Mandela's story also. Um, you know, I really loved his struggles. I really loved um, how he, um, the love that he had and the difference of, uh, in terms of his mindset when he came out of his struggle. There was no hate. He re understood the bigger picture and much more. A lot of them are dead. I did not have a lot of, um, even female, I really searched hard. Yeah. But um, I have a lot of, um, you know, dead authors and um, men and women um, in the past. No, not much now. I don't know. Maybe you could recommend. <laughs> Is there any you'd recommend? There we go. We'll, we'll figure that out together. There we go. So then here's here's one, one thing I want to ask then. Moving forward into the business, what legacy do you want to leave behind? I want to leave behind um, an organization that is global and it's globally affecting or improving um, the workforce. It, globally, it's assisting persons in figuring out what it is that they want to do truly and helping them get there. That's, that's my legacy. I think that will significantly change the world um, you know, in, in a positive way. Happy people. You know, going home, driving, no road rage, no <laughs> Monday morning, um, you know, anger. It's like happy people. You're happy. You know, you're going. So you're doing and happy people, competent people, uh, you know, and people reaching their fullest potential in your industry because you're excited. You're good at it, you know, and, and, and you're, you're just being your best self. So that's the legacy I would like to leave. All right. Now I have a question for my audience that are watching. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. What is the best business advice for women startup owners? Plan. Plan well. A lot of businesses fail because we do not plan. We have an idea and we run out of the gate too quickly and we, you will fail. If you are not um, able to withstand all the challenges, the obstacles, the delays in starting a business, you will fail. The best ideas fail. So I would say plan well, not be stalled, you know, and, 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 and be stuck in, with, in, in action. Plan well and then launch. Okay, so let me, let me take two steps back because for me, I thought I was a procrastinator uh, because I took too long to open up my business because I wanted to research this and research that and research this and more and get to know in the business. When is too long and what is too short? I, I think it's, it's more about... Um, it can be a time related to time, but it can also relate it to be related to content. What are you researching? If you have not like put together something that's um, applicable, it's like you're planning, but you're planning with steps to take you from step one to 100, right? Not just planning and just um, um, piling information on top of information. You're planning so that you can make, take actionable steps. You can take actionable steps and you can manage your risk. So if you're doing that, then some persons, it will take them six months, three months. Other persons, it might take you a year according to your situation. But you're planning with actionable steps. You're planning managing your risk. So, okay, with my actionable steps, if I'm planning for this to happen in three months and it doesn't, it occurs in six months, can I survive? Right. So it's that kind of planning, like strategic planning, not just all over the place, you know, 1 million, um, 500 um, a sheet uh, plan. No, it's planning with actionable steps and managing your risk and just being um, in a position where you can with, um, you can move with the storm. Okay. That so would be my summary. Here's another question. I think we pinpointed it in earlier, but I think, I think she wants you to break it really down. So here we go. Why did you decide to become a business owner? She's just tuning in. What was the main thing that said, I'm a, I'm a, my own boss. I'm the boss. Shelly's the I, boss. 
I, I took, um, from myself, I took the opportunity. I was given an opportunity and I seized the opportunity. It's not necessarily that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I seized the opportunity. And then as I was doing it, I found that because I had my personality, I've always been um, strong in many areas. I was always academically strong. I was in sport, um, leadership. There's so many things that I did well. I was able to balance leadership. And I've all, I was always, no matter where I've gone, I've always been promoted to be the, the president of something, the captain of something. I've always been my personality, so I was able to, um, uh, I would say, um, flourish in entrepreneurship, and so I stayed. If I was failing and I realized it was not for me, I would have gone down another route of finding some other skill to uh, master. All right. Well, listen, I love when my audience ask questions, so let's put them back up real quick. So check her out from Remax. There you go. And Entrepreneurs are Self Online, RKM. Thank you, you guys, so much for your questions because this is what it's all about. It's teaching each other how to move forward. It's teaching each other how to get to that next level. And that's what you're doing. You're taking your skills and you're helping others to move forward. And that's what we all need to do is brand ourselves and teach forward. So your classes, since you know, since we're doing COVID, are you doing online classes? You're doing online speaking. Where can we find you? Yeah, so I have um, programs um, right now with my website um, that are starting again in September. Um, apart from that, I am already so buckled down in everything else that I'm doing. I'm super busy. And you can reach me on LinkedIn. If there's any questions that you have for me, reach out on LinkedIn. Ask me. If I can send you a, a, a worksheet, if I can give you an advice or, or, or send you to a resource that I know for your problem, I'll be happy to do it. So reach out to me on social media and I will assist you as best as I can. There you go. All right. It's before I let you go, we have one more game to play. You ready? Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. it. It's called fire rapper. Ready? So I just fire okay. questions at you. You just wrap them real quick and back out me. Whatever you think comes to your head, you just say it. And if you want to explain, you have like, 45 seconds to explain your answers. Okay. You good? My best. All right. Okay. Here we go. White rice or rice and peas? Rice and peas. Okay. Favorite dessert? Um, pecan pie. All right. Favorite job you've ever had? I'm working for myself. All right. What is the first book that you've read that changed your life? Uh, the Richest Man in Babylon. All right. What is your hidden talent that nobody knows about? Hmm. My hidden talent. Oh, I can. I, I, I grow stuff. I'm a farmer. I've had a farm before, so I can. I've planted and I've grown plants too, perennial plants. So I'm a farmer. Okay. I can do aquaponics. All right. So when no one's around, you're jumping in the shower. What song are you singing? I'm singing a lot of old reggae, a lot of old reggae. All Bob right. Marley, just a, a bunch of old reggae. Okay. If you could meet anybody, past, future, who would you want to meet? I would want to meet uh, Napoleon Hill. I'd like to meet him. All right. So here it is. He says to you, I'm coming over for dinner. You got to impress him with one meal. What are you making? I'm going to do something Jamaican. So I'm probably going to do some rice and peas and some jerk chicken and uh, just some fried plantains and, you know, beautiful salad. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much going to, I'm going to stick with Jamaican because would, it would be new to him. It would not be something you would have experienced before. So I would stick with my Jamaican meal. All right. So then if it's Jamaican meal, here's my last question because now you got me hungry. All right. Is it carrot juice or sweet sap? Uh, for me, it would be carrot juice. I can't stand sweet stuff. It's just like, it's not for me. There, see, there we go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. We got to know you a little bit better. See, it was painless, right? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I'm going to look back at it. I'm going to rewatch it. I'm going to be able to see all the things I could have done better, but I survived. So thank you. There you go. And my audience, if you, she did a great job. Make sure you give her some hearts and some likes to show her some love. 
make sure she understands. And that's all it's all about is giving information. You did a fantastic job. But before we let you go, is there anybody out there you want to say hi to? It's your time to do the queen wave and say hi to anybody you're watching, family and friends. Do your shout outs. Just my husband and my, you know, five million kids just saying hi to them i'm here and thank you for uh supporting me and being behind me no matter how crazy my day gets there you go there you go all right everybody thank you so much there is her email you can shout her out like i always say to everybody thank you so much you didn't have to watch but you did and i appreciate you did and because you did watch here it is be happy don't wake up every morning going to work unhappy. Find that <laughs> life smile. And if you can change, change. It's never too late to change that job or to get to that next level. Sometimes we're scared to go into the boss and say, you know something? I need a new position. I think I can do that job. Give me a shot. It's your shot to go in ahead and do it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. It's come to an end, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, head over right now to Twitter and Facebook and like, share, and get involved. Join us next time. Please be advised that this podcast is meant for educational and informational purposes only and is in no way a replacement for legal or medical advice. The opinions contained within are solely those of the interviewers and interviewees and should be received as so. Those seeking help or advice are encouraged to obtain professional legal and medical services.